What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll install and wire a new ceiling fan in a room with no existing fixture in the ceiling. I'll cut a hole in the ceiling, install a ceiling fan box, and install the ceiling fan. I'll also install a new box and switch in the wall and wire it up. I'm doing this in a room where I have access above the ceiling in the attic. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Now let's get started. First is a disclaimer. I am not a licensed electrician and I'm not claiming to be one. So officially, this is only being provided as a reference to use at your own risk. But I'll show you how I did it. Now with that out of the way, for this project there are three main tasks. Install a fan in the ceiling. Install a switch in the wall and wire them up. First, turn off the breaker to whatever switches, fixtures, or wires you'll be working with. Let's begin with the ceiling fan. First, I mark the location of the ceiling fan on the ceiling. I desired it to be in the center of the room. Check your specific ceiling fan instructions. It'll specify required distances from obstructions, such as doors. The center of this room is all clear. My floor joists run this way. With the location marked, I used a stud finder to determine if it's between floor joists or directly on a joist. And it's between joists. I used this kit to mount the ceiling fan box between the floor joists. Rayco Ceiling Brace and Box Kit. You just slide the arms apart to fit between the floor joists. Then screw them in. It comes with all the required hardware and a cord grip. The box mounts on the brace with two screws and the box can be moved side to side on the brace. I just got the screws started so the box remains adjustable. Tightening the two screws later will lock the box securely in place on the brace. To prepare this, I also punched out one of the knockouts. One more step to prepare this. If you have half inch drywall, you're all set. Mine is three quarter inch, so I need to break off these tabs. So that way the box sits flush with the ceiling when installed. Now, this is all set. As an alternative, you could screw a 2x4 between the joist and mount a box to the 2x4, but for $8, the convenience of the Rayco kit was worth every penny. I'll drill a hole in the ceiling for the box from above, in the attic. Otherwise, if it's drilled from below, insulation will fall all over the place. No thanks. I first drilled a small hole through the ceiling on the X marks the spot, about an eighth inch in diameter just large enough to fit a wire coat hanger through. Then I straightened out a wire coat hanger and pushed it up through the hole. This will allow me to easily find this location when up in the attic. Next, I need to prepare the switch box location on the wall. There are a couple of options for switches. I'm definitely installing two switches, one for the fan and one for the light. Although it is an option to use a single switch for the whole unit, I personally dislike turning the whole unit on and off with one switch and having to pull those chains to turn the fan and lights on and off. I want to control the fan and lights independently with switches in the wall. No chains. Going with two switches, a double box can be used with two separate switches. Or a single box can be used with one of these double switches. I'm going with this one. I like using the top switch for the fan and the bottom switch for the light, which matches the physical fan unit. It just feels intuitive to me and is my personal preference. I have an existing switch box, which currently controls wall outlets for use with floor lamps. I don't like this functionality and don't want it, so I'll be using this existing location, and it already has a power source. However, if you do not have an existing box and power, no problem. Just cut a new hole for the box. We will feed wires down later. I will be running a new wire from the fan to this box in the attic. There is no way to drop a wire into a knockout hole in the back of this existing box. I'm removing this existing box from the wall. You can pry it from the stud a bit, then slide a saw in there and cut the two nails. But I just broke the box up and pulled it out in pieces because I was feeling like a rebel. Now with the open hole, I can easily feed new wires from above. Before we move on, I'll explain how to wire this and address the extra wires hanging out of my wall, just to clear up any uncertainty. Here is a diagram of what needs to be done. A power source runs from the breaker into the switch box. Two wires plus a ground. The black is hot and the white is neutral. In the switch box are two independent switches. 
one for the fan and one for the lights. Both switches use the same hot input from the breaker. From the switches is a three wire plus ground. The three wires are white, which is neutral, black, which is hot, and red, which is an alternate hot. The neutral from the breaker gets spliced with the neutral in the three wire, going to the ceiling fan. From each switch is a hot to the ceiling fan. I'm running the black to the fan and the red to the light. Also, splice the two grounds and connect it to the switch. At the ceiling fan, connect the neutral to neutral, black to the fan and red to the light, and splice the grounds. In my box, because of the switched outlet functionality, it differs slightly from the diagram. The red is hot, instead of black. The black is nothing. It was feedback to the switched outlet. And this extra two wire is just spliced in and powers something else in the house. It is unrelated to the ceiling fan. So the functionality is exactly as shown in the diagram, but that's why mine looks a little bit different. Now it's time to go up and do the dirty work. I'm bringing everything I need with me, so I will only be going up once. First, a drill with a four inch diameter hole saw to cut the hole for the box. The ceiling fan box kit. The screws to attach the fan brace to the floor joist. A driver to install the screws. Spray foam insulation to apply around the box so heat is not lost through the ceiling around the box. Three wire plus ground to run from the switch to the fan. Cable staples to secure the wire. A hammer to install the cable staples. Wire cutters to cut the wire to length. And a Phillips screwdriver and a flashlight just in case, but I should not need them and personal protection. Since I will be stirring up insulation, I have boots, pants, long sleeve shirt, and gloves to protect my skin, and safety glasses and breathing protection. Time to head up. Going through my access hole is inconvenient. I brought everything I need to go up only once. As I travel, I see the coat hanger. Nice. Dig the insulation away so it's clear between the floor joists. Push the coat hanger back down out of the hole. Drill the hole for the box using the 4 inch hole saw. Using the coat hanger hole as a pilot hole. With the hole present, just drop the box in and spread the mounting bracket to the floor joist. Screw the bracket to the joist. Apply the foam insulation around the box. Time to run some wire. I'll start by feeding it down to the switch box. I found the top of the wall and had a helper below shine a flashlight in the switch box hole to help me find it. Then I fed the new wire down. I had my helper pull about a foot of wire out of the switch box hole. Then I secured it with a staple. If you cut a new switch box hole with no power, run a new power wire down as well and splice it into existing power that you have access to in the attic. Next, run the three wire back to the fan box. Cut it so a foot hangs out and secure it with a staple. Fill in all the insulation that you dug out and you are done in the attic. So here's what I have below. I have plenty of wire to work with hanging out of the fan box and the switch location. Next, I mounted and wired the ceiling fan. I tightened the two box screws to secure it to the brace. Then I prepared the new wire by installing the cord grip. Slide it up the wire and seat it into the knockout in the fan box. All set. Then I cut the wire to length and stripped the ends ready to install the ceiling fan. Use the insulation manual for your specific fan and assemble it accordingly. Mine was pretty simple and straightforward, but it took some time to get through. Assembling the blades definitely took the most time. And there it is. Looks like a ceiling fan. All set. On to the switch. Here's the hole in the wall and all of the required wires hanging out. And here's the new box and switch. I will not be able to pound these anchor nails in 
since the wall is finished, but I have an easy workaround. First, I remove the nails. Then I remove the nail holders. I've just ground them off in the past, which is easy and clean. Today, I'm just going to cut them off with some wire cutters, because it's easy, convenient, and does the job. Now the box will slide into the hole. Next, I get two screws started, towing them in. I'll be driving these into the wall stud to secure the box. Inset them so they enter the stud, not the drywall. Next, punch out the required knockouts. I need to use three. Two on the top and one on the bottom. Then, I insert the wires into the knockout holes in the back of the box and pull them through as I slide the box into the wall. After the box is all the way in and flush with the wall, I drive the screws into the stud. This box is secure and not going anywhere. I'm pretty much home free now. Wire up the switch and install it in the box. Install the switch cover. Turn the breaker back on to supply power to the switch. Now enjoy your new ceiling fan. The top switch is for the fan, since the fan is on the top of the unit, and the bottom switch is for the lights, since the lights are on the bottom of the unit. Perfect! Good to go! So that wraps up this video. Remember, I am not a licensed electrician, but that's how I did it. Hopefully you can extract some helpful tips. As always, thanks for watching, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Drop any comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.